Hello everyone, welcome back to Algebra 1 with Miss Betsy. Today we're going to be talking about exponents, which is a very integral part of Algebra 1, and once you grasp how to work with those, it's a very, very helpful uh, skill to have. Before we get started, I want to let you all know that I'm using as my text the second edition of Algebra 1 for Christian Schools that is published by Bob Jones University Press. So if you wish to track directly along with me, that's the edition you need to have. Third edition doesn't work. They're not compatible. Uh, we're going to be on section 1.7 today, which is page number 27. Before we get started, let's go ahead and pray. Father God, I thank you for who you are. I thank you for your constant involvement in our lives. And I thank you that you are present with us and that you are personal to us, that you're not distant and uninvolved. Father, as we go about our day today, I ask that you would give us ears to hear the things that you would teach us and that you would give us a willingness to be um, diligent to those tasks that you place before us. Uh, guide us and bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, my lame joke for today. Now, all of you know the old one, why did the chicken cross the road? I mean, I think you probably learned that one before you're even born. You know, why did the chicken cross the road? Well, he crossed the road, she crossed the road to get to the other side. We have chickens in our home, not in our home, in our yard. We have chickens and we have roosters. And it's quite interesting watching the personality of the hens and the roosters. They're all chickens, but the males are roosters. The females are called hens. And it's just very interesting seeing all of them. Now, the reason that my chickens cross all over the place is to catch a grasshopper or to steal food away from somebody else but I wonder if you can tell me, why did the chicken cross, not the road, but why did the chicken cross the playground? Well, the reason that the chicken crossed the playground is because she wanted to get to the other slide. She was tired of the slides on her side of the road. Okay, exponents is what we are going to talk about first. And today I'm going to be referring more to my text than I typically do because I want to go ahead and key in on some things. But like I said, you do not have to have my text to gain value from this video. Let's say that we had a problem and it was 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5. What is the answer to that problem? Well, you think, oh my word, 5 plus 5 is 10, plus 5 is 15, plus 5 is 20, plus and then you get lost and you think, this is a really long problem. And you don't want to go, if you were actually writing out the length of this, where you did just one step at a time, it would be 10 plus <clears throat> 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5. Because you can only add one pair of numbers at a time. 10 plus 5 is 15 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5. 15 plus 5 is 20 plus 5, plus 5, 25, plus 5, and 30. Now, that way of doing things might work for some of you, but for me, there is no way I'm going to take that much time doing that problem, especially when I can count and I can say, ah, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I have 6 fives. 6 times 5 is 30. Much nicer, isn't it? I have to look up here on the screen, make sure you can see. Yeah. So it was easy here, just count 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, or you use multiplication. Well, what if you had 7 plus 7 plus 7 plus 7 plus 7 plus 7? You'll, you see very quickly that you don't want to have to do 7 plus 7 is 14, 7 plus 7 plus 7 is 21, and that it's much quicker and nicer for you to count the 7s. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, let me do another one. 7, 7s, and then you learned a long time ago your multiplication fact that 7 times 7 is equal to 49. So what have I illustrated for you here? What I've illustrated for you here is that multiplication is repeated addition, or multiplication is like fast addition. 
But it's, seriously, who wants to be adding repeated numbers together over and over and over? It takes forever. The multiplication is much faster than adding numbers repeatedly. So, moving from that addition, you're thinking, okay, what does that have to do with nothing, with exponents? It doesn't have a whole lot to do with exponents right now, but it's the same pattern. What if we had 5 times 5 times 5 times 5? What does that mean? Well, we have repeated multiplication. 5 times 5 is 25 times 5 times 5. 125 times 5, and I think that's 625. You still have to do the multiplication out, but it gets pretty old writing repeated multiplication. 7 times 7 times 7 times 7 times 7. We have 6, 7 used as a factor 6 different times. Well, what exponential form is, we have a way that allows us to sort of do shorthand notation for repeated multiplication. When you use 5 as a factor 4 times, or when you use 7 as a factor 6 times, you can use this particular notation right here. And what exponential notation is, that's a way of showing repeated multiplication. It's much faster to, write, to read to read and to write 5 to the 4th than to read 5 times 5 times 5 times 5, or to read 7 to the 6th than to say 7 times 7 times 7 times 7 times 7 times 7. It's a shorthand notation. It's easier to write. You're much less apt to get confused with things. This is what we call exponential form. Now, this is a review of, of pre-algebra. So we're not going to go hugely into depth of it, but I need some terminology here. If we have this number right here at the bottom, this is sitting on the line. The number that sits on the line, the 5 and the 7, those are what we call bases. So the base is the 5. And the base is the 7. This little number that's raised up here to the side, this is what they call the exponent. So we have an exponent of 4. And we have an exponent of 6. And that's where we get the term exponential form or exponential notation. Now what is it that this actually means, well, what exponential notation means is that you're going to take whatever the base is, and then you're going to use this exponent here, and it says that use this base of 5 as a factor as many times as the exponent is. What are factors? Factors are numbers that you multiply together. Uh, factors are numbers that you multiply together. You end up with a resulting product. This is read 5 to the 4th, 7 to the 6th, 9 to the 8th, 3 to the 7th. You see the pattern? Uh, 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, that's how you read exponents. So, when you have exponential form, you use the base of 5 as a factor 4 times. We have 7 to the 6th. You use the base, which is 7, as a factor, which means you're going to multiply it 6, six times. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And already you see that it's much neater, much clearer, much easier to write this. This is what they call exponential form. 
Now you notice that I said it's like 7 to the 3rd, 7 to the, well, 7 to the 4th, 7 to the 5th, 7 to the 6th is how we read exponential notation. We have two special cases. You'll notice that I didn't say anything about something that looks like this. I don't want to do it that way. When we have a base of 5, an exponent of 2, a base of 4, and an exponent of 3. And I would want all of you at this point to be able to tell me if I said expand this exponential notation. That means, okay, what does this actually say? Well, this says, because the base is 2, and the exponent, I'm sorry, the base is 5, and the exponent is 2, that we are going to use 5 as a factor twice. 5 times 5 is 25. When we have a base of 4 and an exponent of 3, what that tells us is that we are going to use 4 as a factor 3 times. 4 times 4 is 16, times 4 is 64. Now, if you follow the pattern that I told you earlier, 4 to the 4th, 4 to the 5th, 5 to the 2nd, 4 to the 3rd, and that works. But we also have a special term that we use when the exponent is a 2, <clears throat> a special term that we use when the exponent is a 3. You don't have to use it, but they're commonly used. If we have a 2, we say that we pronounce that squared. And if the exponent is a 3, you can pronounce that as cubed. Where in the world does that come from? Well, let's think back to area. If we had a square here, and you guys already know that I do not draw, and it was 5 inches on a side, and we wanted to find that area. How do you find the area of this square? We say that, and we're going to avoid the fact that there's a special formula for the area of a square, but to find the area of something, it's length times width, or here, side times side. So it's 5 times 5, and your area is not 5. 5 times 5 is 25. And then your teacher or your mom or your dad or whoever's instructing you should have told you, remember that whenever you do area, you have square inches. Or feet or miles or whatever the units are, but with area, it's always square. We have length times width, we have side times side, and that makes a square, doesn't it? Well, what is this 5 times 5 here? If we put this into exponential form, the factor is the base that is used as a factor twice as 5. It's used as a factor two separate times. 5 to the second can also be read 5 squared. That's because it goes back to area. When you have two factors that you multiply together, you have square units. So two factors, we just read 5 squared. Can you read 5 to the, five to the second? Sure. I'm not going to say 5 to the second. I just automatically revert to 5 squared. Similarly with 4 cubed. Now once again, I have like no ability here. I think I'm probably missing something there. This is supposed to be a cube. What is cube? What units are we talking about? Well, a cube here is 4 inches this way, 4 inches up, and the bottom is 4 inches. And you know, you know what volume is. Um, let see if I can find something right quick here. This old cassette player that I have. This is a cube. The base 
you have length times width, and then you have the depth, or the height. So there are three units of measure that are involved in a cube. Length times width times height. How do you find volume? The amount of space that a box takes up. Volume is length times width times height. So you have four times four times four. And we'll say this is inches. Four inches times four inches times four inches. You have 64 what? Remember, any time that you do word problems, you have to be careful to show your units. 64 what? 64 miles, 64 dollars, 64 teddy bears? No, volume is always cubic units. In this case, it's 64 cubic inches. Cubic. That's where we come up, that's where we get the, the 4 to the 3rd can also be read 4 cubed as the units of volume where we have the factor used 4 times makes a cube. So 4 squared, 5 cubed, 4 to the second, 5 to the third, whichever you wish to use is fine, but you need to understand that that's where we get the cubic and where we get the squared from. Alright, let's see what I want to do now. Okay. Exponential form again. Said that the base and the exponent are very, very important. What is the base? The base is the number that is being used as a factor. The exponent determines or tells you how many times the base how many times that factor is repeated. Here we have negative 3 squared, and we have the parentheses here, which are very, very important. I'm going to show you why right now. This tells us that negative 3 is used as a factor two times. Negative 3 times a negative 3, and you know that if you have a pair of negative fa factors, your solution is always going to be positive. Now, is negative 3 in parentheses squared the same as this expression here? No, it's not, because your exponent only relates to the number that it is directly touching, if you will. This actually can be read as the opposite of 3 squared. What we have is the opposite of 3 used as a factor twice. You see that these two are not the same. This is crucial, critical, that you catch this and that you catch this early because this causes problems all the time. The opposite of 4 squared is negative 16. Negative 4 squared is a positive 16. And this is only going to have an effect if you have um, an even exponent. Because watch what happens if instead of it being squared, let's change this to cubed and see how that affects our problem. What is this telling us once I put my cube back here? Negative 3 cubed. It says use negative 3 as a factor three times. One, two, three. Negative 3 times a negative 3 is a positive 9. Now you have a positive number, a positive factor, times a negative factor. And when you have oppositely signed numbers that you're multiplying together, what answer do you get? It's always negative. Negative 3. Okay? 
negative 3, not okay. <laughs> negative 3 times 9 is a negative 27. Well, let's see what happens when we have the opposite of 3 cubed. This says the opposite of 3 used as a factor 3 times, which also gives us a negative 27. So when your exponent is an odd number, you're going to have enough pairs, odd, pairs of odd factors cancel out that you still get that you end up with a negative product. You have a negative product here because you're taking the opposite of a positive number. Okay, it sounds a little technical, a little bit picky, maybe, but it's a very, very, very important thing to understand. So when you are copying problems, pay close attention. If you have parentheses, you have to use them. If you don't have parentheses, don't add them. This is not equal to negative 3 times a negative 3 times a negative 3. Key. Hugely important. The opposite of 3 cubed does not equal this. It's written like this. I sort of feel like I'm beating a dead horse. Something that I'm sure you know by now, or if you haven't learned by now in your, in your schooling, that anything a teacher beats to death tends to be really important. Either it's really important because it builds on everything else, it's really important because it's going to show up in your class, or it's really important because the teacher's passionate about it. This is really important because it's going to show up in your, in your tests. This is really important because if you wish to be successful, in your math, this is a key thing to understand. It's, uh, this is really stretching the illustration, but when you're learning to drive, you got to know what's the pedal and what's the, what's the gas pedal, what's the brake pedal, and if you drive a standard, what's the clutch pedal. Those three are not interchangeable. You have, each has a specific purpose. These two are not interchangeable, and if you mess them up, you're going to mess up your problem. Okay? Enough said. I think that horse is just about as dead as I am able to make it. So let's move on. Okay. What happens if you're going to multiply together like bases? Because we're going to move into some rules now that are a little bit different. Because you know how to multiply numbers together. But what happens if you're going to multiply exponential numbers together, numbers that have the same base. For example, if we have 5 squared, and I won't use the parentheses, 5 squared times 5 cubed. Now you might think, oh, well, Miss Betsy, that's simple. I know what multiplication is. That has to be equal to 5 to the 6. Well, is that really equal to 5 to the 6? And you've already clued in here since I'm going to camp on this for a moment that it's not equal to 5 to the 6. This is a key area where students have difficulty. They think multiplication, I'm going to multiply exponents. No. What is 5 squared? What's that mean? This says take 5 and use it as a factor twice. What does this say? This says use 5 as a factor three times. Aha! Uh -huh. Now you see the difference, don't you? Cold coffee is not good. <clears throat> How many times has this been used as a factor? One, two, three, four, five. So, 5 squared times 5 cubed is 5 to the fifth. Hmm. 5 squared times 5 cubed is not equal to 5 to the sixth. Let's see if we can develop a discover a pattern here. What if we have 
7 to the 3rd times 7 to the 4th. Is that going to be equal to 7 to the 12th? 3 times 4 is 12. What do we have? 7 cubed says use 7 as a factor 3 times. 7 to the 4th says now 7 is used as a factor 4 more times. Use 3 times here. Used four times here. How many times is seven used as a factor? Seven times. You see the, the connection? It's not multiplication, is it? What was our other problem? We had five squared times five cubed was five to the fifth. What's the connection? Mm -hmm. You add the exponents together. Let's say that you had something like 10 to the 12th times 10 to the 22nd. My fingers just don't want to cooperate. What does this actually mean? 10 to the 12th? times 10 to the 22nd. And I know you're cringing, you're thinking, am I, gonna, am I gonna write 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10? Uh, no, I'm not. But you see right here, this is a good example of why exponential notation is so good. What does this mean? It means 10 is used 12 times as a factor. The second one means that 10 is used 22 times as a factor. Add the number of factors all up. 12 plus 22. This solution here is 10 to the 34th. And you might be thinking, that's a really, really bizarre number. Believe it or not, you use numbers like this a lot in science. They're used to represent very, very large numbers, like the number of um, atoms in a molecule. They're used to indicate very, very small numbers if the exponent is negative, which is the size of an atom in a molecule. So, when what I've shown you, illustrated for you, is what they call the multiplication property the multiplication property of exponents. Write this down, memorize it. Be able to apply it. Multiplication property of exponents. Let me make sure that I use the same that they use. x to the a plus x to the b is equal to x to the a plus b. As long as x is an integer, if you have something that looks like this, x to the a times x to the b is equal to x to the a plus b. It sounds like I'm speaking a foreign language, and I am to some degree, but you're understanding this. It's the language of math. What this tells us here is that as long as the base is the same, you're multiplying them together, you keep the base, and you add the exponents. Our example right here, again, let's see. 6 cubed times 6 to the 5th. What's that going to be equal to? Well, the bases are the same. You keep the base and you add the exponents. See how easy it is to solve this. As long as you learn the rule, you're fine. Don't sit down in your homework and say that 6 cubed times 6 to the 5th is equal to 6 to the 15th. It's not. But that's the trap you're going to fall into if you do not take time to learn the multiplication property of exponents. 
Let me check my time here. Ah! Okay. Wasn't that good? Ah! Next property that we're going to talk about is what happens if you're going to divide exponents. And you might be thinking, okay, if we're multiplying, we're going to add exponents. If we divide, we're going to subtract exponents. It's exactly what you're going to do. Let me show you. Let's say that you have 5 to the 4th divided by 5 to the 3rd. What is that actually saying? I mean, don't fall into this trap of, let me add this right here. Can you see me? 5 to the 4th divided by 5 cubed. Don't think that you have to divide. 4 divided by 3 is 1 and a 3rd. So this would be equal to 5 to the 1 and a 3rd. And no. Think of what this division symbol here actually means. That you can write this as a fraction. 5 to the 4th over 5 cubed. Or 5 to the 4th divided by 5 cubed. Remember back to canceling common factors. That's what's going to, what I'm going to illustrate for you here. 5 to the 4th actually means use 5 as a factor 4 times. 5 cubed means use it as a factor 3 times. Common factors, you have a pair of factors. 5 and 5, you cancel. You've got another pair, you cancel again. What do you have left? You have 1 factor of 5. So that's 5. What is 4 minus 3? 4 minus 3 is 1. So 5 and 5 to the first are the same thing. You're not typically going to write a 1, but you need to realize that you've got a 1 there. Because you're going to use that when you multiply, when you divide, when you add and subtract. So if we had 7 to the 6th, I'm really keen in on 7 to the 6th today for some silly reason. Divided by 7 to the 4th, what's that answer going to be? Yeah, it's going to be 7 to the 2nd, seven, 7 seven squared. How is that? You, multiply, you write out 6 factors of 7, you write out 4 factors of 7, 4 of those pairs cancel you have two factors remaining. Okay, that is what they call the division property of zero. Division property of exponents. Memorize how this works. Make sure that you understand what it's called. This is the division property of exponents. Whoops exponents. And this is going to tell us, um, for these integers that we're using for x, a, and b, x cannot be equal to zero. Okay? But if we have x to the a divided by x to the b, that's equal to x to the a minus b x can't be equal to zero, and we'll talk about that in another time. Actually, the reason it's not equal to zero is because then it goes away. It becomes um, not recognizable to you as an exponential expression. If you're dividing exponentials that have the same base, you subtract the exponents. So then we also have a power property. What are powers? Powers are when you remember 2 squared is equal to 4, right? 2 squared, 2 times 2 is 4. 2 cubed is 8. 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. These are powers. When you raise something to a power, or when you multiply, when you use these exponents here, those are what they call powers. So what are they talking about with the power property? Third one that you have to memorize, power property. 
what happens if we say 2 squared cubed? We're going to take an exponential expression. We're going to raise it to a power. Let's remember what this exponent here means. The base, what's the base here? The base is 2 squared. Because we have these parentheses, the base is 2 squared. What is the exponent? The exponent is 3. What does exponential notation tell us? It tells us use the base as a factor as many times as the exponent is. So 2 squared times 2 squared times 2 squared. What's 2 squared mean? 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Times two. How many times has that been that 2 been used as an exponent? 6 times. What's the connection here? How do we get 6 with the 2 and the 3? You multiply it. 2 times 3 is 6. Let's see if that works again. What if we have 3 cubed cubed? We use our expansion of exponents. This says 3 cubed is not 3 squared. It says 3 cubed is used as a factor three times. Three cubed is three times three times three. Three cubed is three times three times three. Three cubed, again, is three times three times three. How many times is three used as a factor? Three, six, nine. Three to the ninth, that looks like an A, 3 to the ninth. How do we get 9 with a 3 and a 3? We multiply them together. So our power property tells us this, that when you raise an exponential to a power, you multiply the exponents. This, hmm, let me see. If there's a better way to write this, there really isn't. It might look like I'm writing the same thing here, and I'm not. Because this says, use your exponential as a factor, however many times here. The way you evaluate this, if you have a power, an exponential that's raised to a power, you multiply the exponents. Oh my, 6 cubed to the 8th would be 6 to the 3 times 8, which is equal to 6 to the 24. You could add all of those up, but you're going to have 6 cubed, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 times, and then you break that down, and you have 8 groups of 3, which is where you end up with the fact, the rule that says if you have the power property of exponents, that you're going to multiply together those two exponents. And then one last one is the zero property. It says that any, anything that is raised to the zero property, to the zero power, except for one, except for zero, has a value of one. Seven to the zero is equal to one. 1,000 1, to the 0 is equal to 1. Negative 7 to the 0 is equal to 1. As long as your base is not equal to 0. Here's your little caveat. Base can not be 0. This is the zero property for exponents. Anything raised to the zero power is one. That's your fourth property of exponents that you need to just memorize here. And that's the end of section 1.7.
where we're doing exponential notation and reviewing properties of exponents. If you have difficulty, send me a text, ask me a question when I see you face to face on Friday. Uh, for those of you who aren't in my class, comment on my video and I'll get back to you if I can. Thanks and I'll see you next time.